Here we go. Thanksgiving Eve, Storm Eve for us here. Insights, the deep dive into meteorology, get both of us together today in preparation for the storm. Rain or snow, depending on where you are across New England, our app is free and it's an awesome tool to have. It is. Just search Noises One Degree Outside, whether in the App Store or Google Play, you'll be able to get your hourly forecast, your live radar, and watch the storm as it unfolds, plus the 14-day forecast. And Danielle, we do have here some of the top headlines to take away before we dive into the details. So the rain and snow arrives tomorrow morning, going to be huge. Huge elevation differences in terms of snowfall amounts. It's going to taper gradually for most during the evening hours. Behind the system, the drying wind is going to preclude a flash freeze. So that's good news. It's not like we get a snap of cold air that comes in and freezes everything up. It will be a drier and breezy Friday wintry feeling but fair overall for the upcoming weekend both days that's right and you know you're going to dive into some of the details you're going to show us the overview and then i'll come in after that and give some of the zoomed in stuff so we did have i'll step up to the green screen here we did have a little bit of rain obviously over the last 24 hours put a little bit of a dent in the drought conditions across new england not a huge dent but we'll take what moisture we can get here in terms of the precipitation that comes down across new england so for most spots we were talking about either side of a quarter inch of rain although it was a little bit less a few hundreds on cape cod either side of a quarter of an inch to up to a half an inch in a few spots. Now, across the country, obviously, it's a really busy travel day. A lot of things going on in terms of getting to your destination. And in general, the country is fairly quiet. There is a storm center. This is the one that's going to be moving towards us. That's bringing some areas of snow in the Rockies with some showers that do extend into Kansas and a little thin strip of it into portions of the Midwest. Otherwise, that storm heads east and behind it for Thanksgiving, most of the country except for us, with the storm center right over New England, is fairly quiet. Now, that storm is going to strengthen and pass over us. Temperature-wise, it's coldest in the northern plains. Look at the blues and purples that show up here. This is temperatures that are going to be in single digits. And a lot of the country, particularly the northern two-thirds, will be generally colder than average. If you want some 70s and 80s, get to go across the southeastern United States. And that's where a front will linger over the day on Friday. So places like the Gulf Coast down through Florida with that lingering cold front actually coming off of our storm system. We'll have some pockets of rain, downpours, and embedded thunderstorms. Some lake effect bands of snow will come in during the day on Friday. High pressure building into the southern plains and a little more storminess, but generally quieter than they've been across the Pacific Northwest. Our storm departs and it's generally fair weather here in New England. Temperature wise, still really cold though on Friday in the Dakotas, extending back down into the Midwest. And that chunk of cold in modified form comes into New England over the course of the upcoming weekend, generally kind of chilly all the way down to the Gulf, cooler than average. Now, let's get to what we all want to know. Zoomed in here in terms of the predictive radar. For us, it's going to be wet turkey trots in the morning, and the football games have the wet weather gear with you, although earlier in the morning, like 5, 6 a.m., it is lighter in terms of the intensity of the precipitation. Then it picks up late morning through midday, the blue indicating snow here. By late morning and through, I'd say early to mid-afternoon, that's kind of the height of this storm. Areas of rain, locally heavy downpours, snow with elevation, you notice, through far western, central, northern New England. By late afternoon to early evening, we will see the intensity of the precipitation let up somewhat across southern New England. Notice we get kind of more showery activity. Tail end of it, though, you notice between about 4 and 8 p.m., things do start to wrap up. We get one more little push. And then central and northern New England, it takes a little bit longer for us until 9 or 10 o'clock with far northern Maine dealing with pockets of snow actually into the first part of the overnight. This is Friday, and it is generally quiet overall. There may be a couple flurries that come off of some lake effect snow bands. So it is very highly dependent on elevation. We're going to take a zoomed in look at that dependence with Matt. Danielle, thanks very much. I'm just going to take that same map you showed us, zoom it in a little bit. It is remarkable the role that elevation plays. And you can see as we get to 9 o'clock Thanksgiving morning, doesn't matter how far north you are in the Champlain Valley, it's all about elevation. You're raining in the Champlain Valley. You're raining at least in some of the upper valley, although you can see the snow taking hold at Littleton for a bit. And then once you get down from Concord to Manchester, you probably either rain, snow mix, or just rain. And as we go deeper into the day, we get out to noontime, precipitation gets heavier. Notice you've got that snow picking up in intensity in southwest New Hampshire, still elevation dependency with Keene sitting in the valley, still at I-91 as well. 
But as you further ramp up the precipitation and you can cool the atmosphere by getting heavier precipitation, watch what happens between noon and about 3 p.m. We see a flip to snow happening just about down to Concord, New Hampshire, happening through a lot of eastern New Hampshire at Route 16, happening through more of southwest New Hampshire and closing in on the upper valley. So your heaviest snow comes down in a lot of central and northern New England as we get to the middle and late afternoon. And then you've actually got that flip that goes all the way down once again into the Berkshires where you started as snow. And and you can see it closing in on the main turnpike, too, when you start getting through Lewiston, Augusta, Waterville, Maine, as we head to Thursday evening. Some uh, probably winter storm driving conditions along the main turnpike when you start getting through that stretch. Notice by 9 p.m., I mean, you're done between 6 and 9 with the rain across southern New England and even southern New Hampshire wraps things up. But the snow is going to take longer to ship on out as we head into the course of uh, Thanksgiving night. And by Friday, as you showed us, a lot of that is kind of out of the picture for us here as the drier air is working in. The stakes are high on snow amounts because there's so much precipitation, right? Where it rains, okay, three quarters of an inch to an inch. But where it snows and where it stays all snow in the higher terrain, you've got enough precipitation coming down out of this thing for a decent amount of snow. So I think what's most interesting is the spots in northwest Worcester County where we think elevation is a huge factor so that Fitchburg and Lemonster, look, all the way down to Worcester, I wouldn't say you wouldn't get anything. I think around 1,000 feet, Danielle and I are thinking you probably get somewhere around a coating. You might squeeze out an inch on the grass at 1,000 feet, like the Worcester Airport, for example. But the farther north and west you go, you can line this up with the legend at the top. We may get an excess of four inches of snow in some of the higher terrain in northwest Worcester. County. A same thing when you get into Berkshire County. Some of the elevations above 1,500 feet may actually get into the purple, which represents 8 to 12 inches of snow. And then, of course, as you get down in elevation, you pick up less, and that's the case through northwest Connecticut as well. Look at the elevation dependency coming out of Keene, going into the hills, and up toward Washington. Remember, that first shade of purple, you're 8 to 12 inches over a foot possible in some of the high terrain, and that's the case in the central and southern Green Mountains as well. This will continue to be the case the farther north you go. It does not matter how much northward extent you get. What matters is how much elevation you have. And that's why as you get into Grafton County, the Northern Lakes region from Newfoundland Squam, some of the higher terrain above 1,000 feet may get over an eight inch snowfall. And then when you get into lower terrain, you get along 93, you go in and out of the hills. So your amounts vary along the interstate. Same deal coming through I-89. But look at these high amounts. It'll be over a foot of snow and in some spots, maybe over 16 inches when you get in some of the high peaks across central and northern Vermont. Same thing in the presidentials for that matter. Snowmobile country, I can tell you, very elevation dependent as well. And that even runs up into Pittsburgh, New Hampshire, Coas County, the high terrain picking up 8 to 12 or a little bit more. The lower terrain, nowhere near that. It's the same thing in Maine. As you get into the higher terrain, you get the higher amounts. As you come down to the coastal plain, you get really nothing in terms of snow. It's an all rain event for you. It picks up through Katahdin. It picks up through central Maine, northern Maine for that matter as well. But again, remains elevation dependent in all of these spots. As the storm center passes by, we get the drying wind that comes in on Thursday night. And that's why at the start of the video, we told you that we don't expect a flash freeze in the areas that rain, probably a drying wind. One thing worth pointing out, Saturday and Sunday, the Green Mountains in particular do pick up some of the lake effect snows coming off. It may be enhanced on the western slopes of the green. So that would add some additional accumulation, maybe as much as a few inches over the weekend or more. So we'll keep an eye on that. It's a little early to be able to nail that down for you Saturday, Sunday. But there will still be snow flying in the greens anyway. Winds on the Cape are going to be gusting 35 to 40 miles per hour as we get through the course of Thursday. Then at Boston, it first comes out of the east, then the northeast, then eventually by Thursday evening out of the northwest gusts to 30 or 35 miles per hour but again unlikely to result in freezing conditions even during the overnight on friday night it just helps to dry things out a little bit and during the course of the day friday it is going to be blustery certainly it'll be breezy but uh, it's not going to be exceptionally cold and i'll show you that right now here's your thursday highs for thanksgiving obviously a very marginal across a lot of northern new england you're not in southern new england on thursday night we drop down to about freezing but it takes a while to get there and you've got a drying wind to getting there as well Friday, you're back to this marginal air that's not exceptionally cold. You get up into the 40s. Friday night, the cool builds in a little bit more. Saturday, it's probably 30s to low 40s. And again, we'll watch the western slopes of the Green Mountains over the course of the weekend because that's where you may get some more snow showers or bursts of snow. Wintertime setting in, so we'll remind you, swag.1degreeoutside.com. That is the address to buy some of the merch. That's the way things look for now. Uh, we'll keep you posted, degreeoutside.com, and, of course, on our app as well.